Recently, a new version of Python has been released and it brought some pretty interesting changes, including speed improvements, experimental JIT compiler, and it can be compiled without the GIL, which allows Python to be multi-threaded for the first time in its life. A while ago, I've taken a look at one of Python's spin-offs, Mojo, and it got me thinking that that can't be the first time someone has tried to improve Python's performance. After I did some research, I found not only that everyone and their mother wants to speed up Python itself, but there are also a bunch of third-party projects which try taking the matter into their own hands with either just-in-time or ahead-of-time compilation. Arguably the biggest change to Python in a long time is an optional removal of the global interpreter lock or GIL for short. This lock makes the vanilla implementation of Python, CPython, stuck to essentially being single threaded. Even if you use multiple threads, no two instructions in CPython ever ran at the same time because of the GIL. It was added in the first place to implicitly make various objects safe for concurrent access and to simplify garbage collection and reference counting. Having GIL around is almost like having a single mutex for all objects in your program. As I said, the latest version can finally be compiled without the notorious lock, which should allow Python to actually benefit from multiple cores. I mean, technically, this was already possible with the multiprocessing library, which basically spawns a new instance of the interpreter in a new process, and that process acts as a thread. But that was, in my opinion, a pretty ugly last resort type of solution. In order to benefit from the new change, the interpreter needs to be compiled with the appropriate flag. You can download the source and compile Python on your own pretty easily. You even have a website that generates compilation instructions interactively. If you're an Arch Linux user, you can also find this no gil version in the AUR alongside all unverified binaries of the world. Anyways, I compiled two versions of Python with and without the gil with these flags. For the no gil version, I just added the disable gil at the end here. I made a little benchmarking script which counts the number of prime numbers using multiple threads. When running this script with 10 workers, 3.13 without the gil has massive benefits over the one with it. Also the time shell command confirms that the gil process is single threaded since total CPU seconds almost match the total elapsed time. Whereas the no gil version's total CPU seconds are much higher than the total elapsed time, which shows that the process ran across multiple threads. Unfortunately, single threaded performance seems to show the opposite image. The no gil version ran much slower than the gil one. I'm not sure if I messed this up or it really is this way. Looks like we'll need to know what type of a workload we have in advance, so we'll deploy the appropriate binary to production for now. I personally really hope the team behind CPython finds a no downsides approach to disabling the GIL, because having multi-threaded Python by default would be really great. GIL aside, 3.13 also includes an experimental JIT mode. If you don't know what a JIT is, here is a quick mostly true explanation. The simplest version of an interpreter is basically a program which parses the source code and directly evaluates it. More advanced interpreters sometimes internally compile the code to bytecode and then evaluate that. A JIT compiler then takes that even one step further and compiles the source down to the target architecture's machine code, either directly or via some intermediate steps. Release notes say that the speed improvements are marginal for now so I didn't even bother with benchmarks. Speaking of benchmarks, I found one guy online that made quite a lot of them. Even without JIT and GIL changes, 3.13 is supposedly faster than the previous version, which is very good news. As I mentioned in the intro, there are also other interesting implementations of Python out there. No, not you, get out. First off, let's get Mojo out of the way. Even though Mojo strives to be a Python superset, I don't consider it to be an implementation of Python. C++ isn't an implementation of C, so let's cross Mojo off the list. Two implementations that I find the most interesting are LPython and Codon. Both try to achieve roughly the same goals, that is, producing binaries and using type hints for actual optimizations, which I don't think CPython is doing. One selling point of LPython is also the support for JIT, but if the JIT in CPython ever gets out of the experimental phase, I'm not sure why anyone would pick LPython over CPython in that aspect. LPython is still in alpha stage and to install it you need to compile it from source. I got lucky with AUR, but the package didn't compile, and when I tried compiling it myself, I ran into some other issues, so I gave up on it and moved on to Codon. Installing Codon is much easier since they provide you with a binary. AUR package works, and even if you aren't an AUR enjoyer like myself, they provide you with a one-liner install script. 
Given that Codon hasn't yet hit version 1 either, I really didn't expect too much from it. To evaluate its performance, I used the basic single threaded function for counting prime numbers from earlier and used each implementation to count how many prime numbers are under 30,000. And since we're benchmarking across different implementations, I put the timer inside the code this time to eliminate the warm-up time of each implementation from the benchmark. I'm always blown away by how much faster some implementations are than the others. CPython finished in 13.4 seconds while Codon finished in just 1.2 seconds. That's over 10 times as fast. After seeing this I just couldn't resist and also ran the same code with Mojo which finished in just 0.8 seconds. That's quite a lot better than even Codon. Although it's important to know that Codon strives to be as close to Python as possible where Mojo takes a bit more liberties when it comes to adding syntax. Anyways, we've seen that Python is getting faster, which is a very good thing, but it still has a lot of room for improvement. To be fair, speed was never a selling point of Python, it was its ease of use, so projects like Codon and Mojo have yet to justify their existence. That'll be all for this video, I hope you had a good time, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again, bye!